because of the power of the web map and how it's being leveraged among our clients, we've really put a lot of resources into expanding the development in terms of how CityWorks can be leveraging that functionality of the web map. And to help illustrate that and what we've accomplished so far, I've asked George Mostakis to come out and join us on the stage. Good morning. Thanks, Becky. So many of you use CityWorks to track the work you do on your roadways. And you do this for your pavement conditions, your signs, your signals, and other roadway-related assets. And traditionally, all of this has been captured in separate data sets. This data is not just important, but it's significant in size as well. Well, with Esri Roads and Highways, all of it can be captured in one single linear reference data set. And so, in addition, your speed limits, your accidents, your addresses, and through the use of the web map, your CityWorks work orders, inspections, and permits can all live inside of a single file. And the result of this consolidation into a single file with a web map is better outcomes. And I'd like to take the time to show you. So I'm going to sign into CityWorks here. And you're going to notice something a little different just off the, you know, out of the chute here. And that is that we're going to use, I'm going to use my ArcGIS account to do that with. And the reason is, is because we want, you know, to maximize all the benefit and all the power of the web map. And we want to be able to be flexible uh, in the consumption, in the use of the web map. And so it only makes sense then to do that with your Esri account. I'm presented with my standard CityWorks experiences here. I'll go into Office. And you no you'll notice this is pretty much the same thing that you're used to, right? You come into your inbox. Let's open up the map. And one of the new tools that we've added into the map that lights up when you sign in with your Esri account and are using a web map is this new one here, Roads and Highways. Now, in my time here at CityWorks, I have gotten this question I don't know how many times. George, how can we define the precise location of where our street work is taking place? Not just block by block, segment by segment, but you know, we did an overlay, and it took part of this segment and part of that segment. How can we do that? Well, this is what Esri Roads and Highways helps you do. So I'd like to illustrate how it works. I just simply click on the starting point, click on an endpoint, and what that basically does there is it defines where my work is taking place. Once I get there, I can decide what kind of an event is it that I want to create here. So I'll pick work order, say create event. And what this is literally doing is it's creating a feature in your GIS, in Esri Roads and Highways. And it participates with all that other great data that you collect, right? It's all mashed together as part of that. And so from here, I can go in, create a work order, pick the activity type that I'm interested in, hit Create. And then once that's done, what we'll do is we'll flip back over to the map. You'll notice here is my asset, right? This is the one that I just generated. We'll flip back over to the map. We'll give it a quick refresh. And voila, there is the precise location of where my work has taken place. Now, this is our first cut at this, and we're going to add more capabilities into this. We're going to be able to do, from an intersection, enter in a distance of where that work st starts and where it begins, and also an offset. So we're really excited about that. Now, the other really neat thing about these little guys is that they behave just like any other item in your GIS, asset in your GIS, and that's because it is GIS, right? It's no different. So what I've done here is I've gone into my work order inbox, highlighted the work orders that I want to 
um, display on the map. And when I flip over back here to the map, there they are. Okay. So we're going to switch gears here a little bit because this is George Mustakis in the context of roads and highways, right? But, you know, George Mustakis doesn't necessarily only work and live and, you know, do his thing within roads and highways. I might also, in the organization, do other things. Well, another new feature that we've added is this ability to bring in your web maps that have been published and shared with you. So in this case, what I'm going to do is, uh, as I've opened up my little tool here, AGO Web Maps, I'm going to come in, pick this folder, and this is literally reading from ArcGIS Online. Now, it can also work with Portal. So if you have an on-prem Portal deployment, same thing happens. So I'll just come down here, pick this Houston Web Map that they shared with me, and just by doing that, I've, I have taken on the persona of a parks person. And so I can come in, zoom in a little bit here, make a park selection, say create work order, and there it is. There are all my parks related activities. Now, Yesterday when I was rehearsing this, a friend walked up to me and said, you know, George, I just thought of something. When was the last time you could, as a user, you could dynamically switch out your map and take on different appearance, different set of permissions, different set of you know, options within CityWorks? And I was embarrassed that I couldn't answer that question, right? And um, so I'm going to pose it all to you guys. I know the answer because I made him tell me. Um, but I'm going to pose it all to you guys, and after the plenary, the first person that comes back and tells me the answer, you get my CityWorks scarf. So that would mean you get two. The rest will only have one, right? So anyway, with, with respect to this, one thing I should point out is that, as Brian mentioned, you know, we're going to add in the future, a whole host of capabilities in that your ArcGIS Online users, your portal users, all of these that you've created for your organization, we're going to be able to bring those into CityWorks at the time of configuration, and you can build out your CityWorks configuration based on that. All right, the last thing I would like to show you. So today, Brian and Becky showed us these Brian talked about the importance and the power of the web map, and Becky showed us the outcome of that, these beautiful web maps. You know, as we prepared for the plenary here, we got to thinking, geez, you know, it's so much data, so important that this information, um, you know, get out there in an easy way. We want to help. So what I've done here is I've switched over into my handy-dandy app switcher, and I've brought up the AG... Uh, in addition to Office, you know, and the other experiences, we have a new experience called AG Assistant. Now, the name AG, at this point, is like a development name. In a way, it's kind of like me. I was born Jim. Two weeks later, my parents renamed me George. And I have the birth certificates to prove it. Uh, same with AG Assistant. You know, you might wonder when I open it up, geez, does it mean ArcGIS Online? Well, no, because it can work with Portal as well. So let's get into it. Let me show you what it's all about. You have these great web maps that are published on ArcGIS Online or in Portal. And some of them are for internal consumption. Some of them are for, you know, external consumption. But the basic idea, idea is, is you want to mash up your CityWorks data into them. And to do that, before, or now, I should say, you know, it's a multi-step process. It takes a while for you to do that. You've got to go probably between 10 and 15 steps to do it. I don't do it that often because, you know, I, I just beg others to do it. They, they're nice and they do it. But I'm happy to say that I can do it with this tool, right? And if it's easy enough for me, 
So what we'll do here is we will go and pull up my web map from ArcGIS Online. And you see in this web map, I have some operational layers, speed limits, lanes, pavement conditions, resting on top of a topographic map. And over on the left here, I'm going to bring up my saved work order searches. And these are all the searches, ones that I've defined. The one in bold is one that I've defined. Um, you know, the rest of them are, are defined by others and shared with me. What's awesome is, is that I can just grab this, right? Say add, add it to my web map, and then place it wherever I want in the sequence of that web map. Okay, so to kind of like, you know, make sure you guys don't think this is like smoke and mirrors or whatever, I'm gonna go to the web map, and this is it. It does not have that layer in it yet, right? But I do have the speed limits, I do have the lanes, do have the pavement condition. So what I'm gonna do here is update it. And as soon as that's done, we'll go back to my web map and refresh it. And when I refresh it, we should see those symbols come in and we'll see the, all the other information that you can draw up with it. Pretty cool, eh? My only, I only wish we would have had this when, you know, St. John's was producing all of the information that they, they had that was so important. And so what you're seeing here, again, I want to point out ArcGIS Online and Portal, but what, we, what you're seeing here, again, based on the web map, and really it's this web GIS pattern. And we want you to consider how this approach can benefit your organization because we haven't enabled these capabilities in the back office application only. And at this time, I'm going to hand it back to Becky, and she's going to show you where else. <laughs>